So thank you for everyone that uh, 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 came through to the to the mishap of the, our Discord green screen room green room uh, to listen to all those soundboards. Uh, <laughs> we don't we don't introduce the host, but uh, we're gonna just chit chat, chit chat, talk. Uh, we uh, uh, Corey Corey Barry uh, uh, call my man. Um, Corey Barry my man. <laughs> Corey Barry my man. <laughs> How was your weekend? What's what's been good, baby? Uh, my weekend was great, man. I got some magic in, did some drafting, got some uh, quality father-daughter time in, and mom got out of the house, which I'm always very happy for her when she can do that. She's got the uh, what they call mom guilt. Are you familiar with this phrase? Oh, yeah, dude. Um, where the mom feels like leaving the dad with the kid is a burden because mm. they understand how much work it is. It's a, it's a silly thing because yeah. I have the most fun hanging out with Juniper. Yeah. Um, but I get it. You know, I do get it. So whenever she's able to get out of the house, I'm just like, yeah, fucking go, get out, go do your thing, be a person, be a whole person that doesn't have a, a crawly thing all over her. What's what's uh, the thing from Total Recall with the the thing inside the body? Oh yeah, yeah, quiet, yeah. quiet. <laughs> uh, so yeah, man. All in all, really, really nice. Um, you know, got some got some work done on some passion projects of mine as well. So no complaints. You know. Your Schwarzenegger no, berry is too good. It's way too good. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. I've been working on it. It's one of the few impressions I have in my back pocket. We're ready to go at a moment's notice. Um. <laughs> how about your weekend, man? Or how about your week? We haven't we haven't heard from you in a minute. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, just busy. Just busy. I mean, like, I it's it's people are like, oh yeah, you you got three kids now. It must be crazy. I'm like, no, honestly, the third kid. I mean, she just she doesn't do anything. She just sits around. The, what's busy <laughs> is having a kindergartner, mm, dude. Like yeah. everything, because she wants to do everything. Like her school is great, so they got like all these events. But you know, that's family movie night. There's a family dance coming up, like PTA stuff, like just you know shit. I never thought I'd say in my life uh -huh. is and and I love it. Like it's it's the best. So like, you know, parent stuff and then like work stuff. So I, I've been busy, but it was a, it was a good weekend. Yeah. I, um, I also gave my, you know, my, my wife a little bit and she went and got her hair done. Um, and then I had my oldest went with one of her aunts and had an auntie day and they went to old sack and mm, you know, she came back with all kinds of shit that I wish she hadn't bought her, you know, <laughs> like one of those, those chickens that like screams when you squeeze it, uh, she brought oh, yeah. it back for her little brother just the absolute worst thing ever because he just comes running out of his room every morning now holding up this chicken above his head and just you know it just screams it like, yeah yeah <laughs> and i'm just like thanks thank you so much like i'm really glad love you got that. to have a day love with that him. for you <laughs> but yeah but he understand when i hate when i say no chicken he just throws it into his room I'm nice like, we're good. <laughs> nice. He gets Smart kid. yeah he does he does so yeah no, it's, it's been good it's just uh just i'm just busy like just and nothing nothing in particular just lots of stuff it's just life, man. G g given the history that I've I've known of you, Barry, I feel like when you're saying that, it almost feels like those moments in when the Justice League talks, and then Batman's like, "I have a PTA meeting for Wayne, for Damian." It's one of those like, "You're in the PTA." It's like one of those cool <laughs> things of like, I've known you for this person, and then seeing you yeah. evolve and grow, it's like now you're part of all these things that you 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 should be part of. I was like, "Oh, that's cool." But like, I imagine still being like, "You should come in with the." You know, like coming in and throwing RKOs at people and all that stuff. I mean, it, it's true. No, there, there have been times where, like, I still, like, I, I pull up and I, rem I remember, like, my friend's dads in high school when they, like, you know, come up in, like, their Firebird, like, smoking a cigarette, like, playing 80s stuff. And I was like, oh, that's the coolest fucking dad in the world. And then, like, I now roll up, you know, in, like, you know, our Hyundai Elantra, like, uh, you know, like nothing, or Santa Fe, sorry. Yeah. Uh, but I'm still like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to have some, like, Rolling fucking, with, like, I'm have some death metal. Too deep <laughs> no, but, you know, it's, it's, you because like, yeah, I know it's classic rock again. As soon as someone gets in the car, it's going to be like, yeah, can we listen to Mamma Mia, the soundtrack? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> we can listen to the Mamma Mia soundtrack. <laughs> Another generation. My back went out the other day. I was listening to a classic rock station. They played Blink. And I, um, my soul hurt. Yeah. It's it's really weird to think about, like, kids who are listening to bands from 2003. Like, that's 20, 20 years, years ago. ago. That is the equivalent of when, like, I was listening to, like, early, you know, like, mid Van Halen. Yeah. I was yeah. like, it doesn't feel the same. Dude, I was in this conversation has, with like, my wife down. the other day where I was like, when I was in middle school, um... And, and elementary school, and I had my little Walkman CD player listening to the Beatles number one CD. 
that was like only it was less than 30 years before right. that right like to me at that time thinking back i was like this is one of the greatest bands in history yeah. but there my, my dad was like i was my favorite band when i was a kid yeah. and like that's now i'm feeling it and it's bizarre yeah. it's bizarre yeah, to know. think that it's bizarre to think that time is a construct a fly um, circle <laughs> yeah uh, now, now we're going down a different rabbit yeah. hole here we go uh i had the the enjoyment of uh playing actually like a core uh yeah cory tried to put me into one draft a long time ago and it was way beyond my my depth but did i yeah it oh, was yeah. with it was with uh kyle and i think connor um yeah it was a while place, ago i bought a box yeah, yeah it was when you still had that corner bench breakfast thing mm -hmm. um and uh, breakfast nook. yeah and yeah. uh i'll play playing some magic and this weekend i got to partake in my first uh draft ever for commander's masters it's well uh, that your first draft ever was a commander's draft because that is a wildly different yeah. situation than a regular draft. I it's mean, I've arena animal. drafted before. Yeah, no. that's more. That's more. That's more in line. But commander draft for your first paper one's kind of wild. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, dude, my first concert ever. Between... Fucking Metallica. Yeah. <laughs> you get it. I uh, yeah. My first yeah. divorce is going to be with fucking uh, uh, one of the Jenners. I don't know. Yeah, okay. That's, that's that's how it's gonna sure. be. It's gonna be terrible. Uh, anyways, um, uh, yeah. And then I, I got really fucking sick. Uh, like Corey, I think saw the beginning of it. I was just like, oh god, I gotta go. And and then yeah, like we, yeah, I saw that when you were dropping my stuff out the other day, and you're like, you're like, can I grab a tissue? And I was like, uh oh. <laughs> I was just leaky Not nosed all day, and then Sunday I was just dead. Today I worked a half day, and I was like, so so I it, you know logically as you do. Uh, watched Murder on the Orient Express, uh, Fast Times. Oh, while you were sick, in bed? yeah, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Uh, For the first time ever. Yeah, they cloned Tyrone and thirty or forty episodes of Hajime no Ippo. So, what did you think of Fast Times? It was a lot more titties than I thought there was going to be. Well, it's of its time, yeah. <laughs> like I was like, damn, it's of its time. I was kind of just that, like, there's a little forest in there though. There's a little forest. forest. There's a little oh, Nick yeah, Cage. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of Jen Jason Jennifer Jason Lee. There's I was like oh, mm -hmm. and and Phoebe Cates. I was like oh my so so many no dies so many titties. I was like <laughs> it's like I was like uncomfortable because I'm like these are these are high school Fun kids. For you. Spicoli's friends in that movie. Those are the two other guys who almost got the part. Oh uh, Spicoli. Wow. Wow. And then Sean Penn walked in and did his thing, and they were like whoa shit. That's yeah. Spicoli. I got, I got a shout out real quick. Mamba in the in the chat saying the Dempsey roll. That shit is fire in fucking Hajime no Info. Oh my god, y'all, y'all, y'all guys, y'all guys, y'all guys. I uh, watched the first episode of Naruto. Ooh, what'd you think? What'd you think? I really like it. You didn't like it? Oh, well, <laughs> I said I really like oh, it. <laughs> I was like, well, fuck. No, it's it's. I didn't like it. I gotta watch more. If you only like the first, it'll only get better because <laughs> yeah, you only no, got introduced really to one character. <laughs> Yeah, it'll only get better. But I dug it. It'll only get better. Uh, that being oh, said, uh, the results from my draft, I was the t the winner of the losers bracket. What's up? Come hey, on, come I came up, in. Dude. Come up. Second. Nice. You second of the there winners bracket, Corey. What's up? What's up? Yeah. And you know what? It was so funny because like I I thought of Barry so much because every because y'all forced me to draft my usual archetype when I was I didn't super force excited shit. To I just took what was in front of me, <laughs> and look, Barry. It was so my stupid. My first pick was green white, and I was like, oh man. <laughs> I never get to play it. I'm so excited to play a new archetype. And then all they passed me was blue white artifacts. <laughs> oh, come on. Barry, right, Barry. I see what it is. I, we were, seconds. so Fine. we were right next to somebody that was also drafting. The first pack opens up is uh, Yuriko of Sh T Tiger Shadow. And then they also drafted Yuriko. And I was just like, we are literally pulling from the same deck. We Together, we decks. have one deck. And then we, <laughs> we just became like twin tigers. And it's like, we have to pe beat everybody. But like, George. Like single person. It was so funny because every time someone would ask a question, I would bring up Barry. I was like, "You see the back of the card? What does it say? Deck master. You should know. <laughs> Build the deck. Build the deck. <laughs> like, should no, I? No, deck no, master. No EDH. No EDH wreck here. You do it yourself. It's like, what you are you thinking? How much removal? How much card draw do you have? <laughs> but yeah. uh, what was your top pull, Tom? Oh, uh, it was probably the full Eureka? the the full frame, uh, full art Eureka. Eureka. It's pretty sick looking. Uh, there was a Rune Scar demon, but I mean, everyone wanted that. Was that imps? The mischief imps? 
that mischievous imps yeah that uh chris got yeah the this it's a black deflecting swap medallion yeah. i felt pretty because nice. i built that perforos deck you know what I'm yeah saying? Mm-hmm. there you go mm-hmm. uh so happy with happy with that that was fun i can't wait for the next one i can't wait for you to do a normal draft yeah i, I mean i uh, will see i don't know if i'm really that good of a deck master but we'll it was it. i've done drafting i'm not that great a drafter i have a lot of fun I, i'm okay at regular draft commander draft was f- wild that was such a different because you have a pack of 20 something cards and you pick two at a time it was yeah. so hard to build in the moment. oh no my brain was i'm re- yeah. i'm 4d fucking chessing it's much, I'm like, mm-hmm. it's much better just the regular draft my De- anyway my demir asked barry you, you good at dra- drafting um i have a decent draft record okay i'm I've, you i feel know. like it, especially barry i had an understanding of, of like the set if you got a minute to look at like what the set's about, I, I'm kind of scared of what his mind might do. <laughs> yes, that's, cool. that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get into the news, it's baby. Ridiculous enough. Yeah. Uh, let's news. get into the news, everyone. As you know, we're going to do some clappy claps for fun. Go ahead, take it away. Away. Come sail away. No, there we go. Sail away. <laughs> Come sail away. Sail Come sail away. away. Come sail away. See, I was doing that one. I was doing the the the, the Dying Darko one. <laughs> um, all righty, y'all. Um, who wants to go first for the news? I'll go. Uh, yeah. Go, oh, please. I'll go. Please. I'll go. So, uh, because uh, Steve's isn't here and wasn't here before, there's lots of it wrestling. It doesn't matter that a Steve's <laughs> oh, isn't here. <laughs> He's going to be so proud of me. So, I, 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 I left myself wide open for that one. Oh, man. <laughs> Continue. Well, there's been lots of there's been lots of wrestling, lots of wrestling news. Um, because as of I uh, believe a week ago, not even a week ago, about a week ago, um, the merger is officially complete between the UFC and the WWE under the branch of TKO Holdings. So the two of them are now under a parent company. Um, Vince McMahon and the McMahon family now not the majority owners of. The WWE. I mean, I know. I, f- I still feel like they probably own a lot, but they're not like the whole sole decision makers anymore. There is now people above them. Uh, so, big merger. You know, went public. Yada yada. Um, which isn't even like I, I feel like that. I mean, we we knew that was coming. That and that was kind of big news. But it was more so what happened. Of course, like a week later, we've got you know Pat McAfee doing. Um, he was he was a uh, you know commentating on SmackDown for a while, then he left, and now he, he came back the other night to SmackDown for the first time in a while after having The Rock on uh, the College Game Day, I believe, is the um, the the show that he had The Rock on. And they talked about you know oh he's he's not sure if he'd want to come back, you know blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And it's like okay cool, he's gonna be there on SmackDown. <laughs> like we all we saw that coming. So Pat McAfee comes out and everyone loses their mind because we all fucking love Pat McAfee. And then, you know, Austin Theory comes out and talking shit and Pat McAfee references the people and everyone's like, oh, my God, it's Smackdown. It's the people. And of course, then, you know, the Rocks music hits and everyone just loses their minds. Of course. Um, I texted to Steve to make sure he was still alive. Um, (laughs) I assumed all the blood rushed south and he was just unconscious for a short (laughs) period of time. He just passed Uh, out. (laughs) Just gone. So the Rock was on Smackdown. John Cena was also on SmackDown. He has been on for, he's been back in the WWE for a couple weeks. um, And it sounds like he's going to be there for a couple months. He's done like a ref thing, like a special guest referee. Like he hasn't any matches. Mm -hmm. But, you know, The Rock comes out, like, you know, lays the SmackDown, of course, on on Austin Theory. Um, The the thing to think about, though, of course, in in all things, we can never have nice things. Um, And of course, we can't have nice things because it's like, wow. This must be to celebrate the merger. This must be to do all that. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, all it takes is one Google search to be like, because of the merger, cleaning house, like layoffs. Oh. They told everybody to work from home so that you could get a call from HR to just stay, stay home. home. Wow. Um, Welcome to uh, Disney D-Day. Exactly. So which WWE has done this. There's, they've done this a lot. There have been multiple times with these huge days where they let, usually it's wrestlers go. Um, this time it was not wrestlers. It was, you know, actual employees, of staff of the WWE, like corporate, um, because, of course, you know, you're combining these offices, you know, you got the merger and mergers always go well for everyone. Right. I mean, come on. Uh, unless you're all these people. Never not getting... gone well. Exactly. So, you, you know, to, to take all the, the heat, you know, using your wrestling terms there, take the heat off of that. They, of course, bring out McAfee. They bring out The Rock. He runs into John Cena backstage. 
Uh, and so, yeah, so we've got this massive merger, TKO and UFC. So now the pipeline for guys that really fight and the guys that fake fight is now complete. <laughs> um, and we, we, you know, we have we can have all the crossovers you can think of, like Ronda Rousey tried to get away from UFC, and now it's like right back there. Mm. So, um, so yeah, we'll see. Full we'll circle. see what comes from it. Full octagon. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, and we'll see what uh, what's to come from that um, that merger down the line. Interesting. So, that is quite interesting. Yeah. As someone yeah. who doesn't doesn't isn't a fan. I mean, I, I would watch it. I would go. But as someone who doesn't partake in the news or learning about it, it's it is it's always interesting to see business dealings and then how it affects and then how it then later on, at the end of the day, the number one boss is the audience, right? So Yeah. Well, and it, it's, if, it's crazy to think about, like, if you watch any of the shows about, like, uh, there's a podcast. Um, oh, what's it called? Uh, Pat McAfee the, Show. Something with uh, Bastard. Is it? Um, Inglorious. No, mm -hmm. I'm blanking on the name of it, but like they talk about like these they, they were these worst bastards in history, um, and usually it's like awful people who've done like terrible things, like you know, crime wise and and other things. And then they did a multiple behind the bastards, series. behind the bastards. They did a multiple episode series on Vince McMahon because he's awful. Like he is he, the the things that he's done are terrible, uh, and so you you it, it's crazy to think the way he took. He killed the territories, um, which the territories were when the United States was actually broken up into smaller areas and different organizations ran wrestling within those groups. And they might have wrestlers go back and forth and stuff. But it was also, you know, it was when television was much more local as well. So you were able to have like, you know, a little bit more kayfabe. You were able to make people think it was real because you had these territories that were kind of separated from each right. other. Right. Vince McMahon, of course, ended that. He killed the territories. He bought everything up. He got everything under the banner of WWF. Um, and you know, which some people say did the greatest things for wrestling ever. Like, I mean, he did, he, he brought in the biggest names and made the most money and had the biggest draws, but he also killed dozens of family businesses and yeah. ruined wrestlers careers. And Yo, you see these guys, that's like are... Chinatown meets star Wars fucking yeah. like story. Dude, <laughs> you want to know they're the, the terrible things like you watch all these different like do these documentaries basically not don't watch any of the a and e documentaries about the wwe because they all just like skewed towards it yeah yeah because usually like the wwe is like paying for or even the wwe's documentaries about themselves like yeah, yeah of the course calls coming from him that's the house like that's not how <laughs> like there are some and you know wrestlers <laughs> like to embellish and and you know make that's up really some, good they, they, i mean they tell stories but there are some yeah they are terrible. storytellers that's exactly what they do yeah but there are some the the things that have happened have come out of it like you have these guys that their bodies and and are, are ruined and they have nothing to show for it and you know and you talk about you know cte and all those other things mm -hmm. like tom have you heard of a man named chris benoit i heard yes. the name okay so i heard the name benoit right yeah. that's how it's spelled yeah mm -hmm. and it's it's a sad one so i'm not going to talk about it all right but there are some of these horror stories and you know could you blame vince mcmahon for all those circumstances i mean a lot could point to him like he was in charge but you know so there's just there's a lot of a lot of shady things and so now we'll see if you know being under a holding group if that makes business more legitimate maybe it'll finally allow them to get health insurance you know and not just be contractors maybe maybe not so we'll see what happens which is wild to think about that there. Yeah, the John Oliver special on how they don't have a health insurance. It's it's. I it's haven't seen that, fun. but I will be watching that. It's a great one tonight, probably. Yeah. Um, so I can take the next one, Tom, because it's going to be quick because it's all facts. All right, facts, facts it's only, all facts. true facts, facts here. Only. Wes Anderson is revisiting uh, Roll Doll uh, works. Uh, he's revisiting the short stories of Henry Sugar. I don't know if anyone here is a Roald Dahl fan growing up, but I was a big one, and that was one of my faves. Uh, famously, Wes Anderson made Fantastic Mr. Fox, Roald Dahl story adapted to screen. These are a series of four shorts that he will be releasing uh, over the course of four days to a big streamer. We won't name him here. We don't have to. Um, but, uh, yeah, as a fan of Roald Dahl, I'm happy to see Roald Dahl's work come to life. Uh, and be a relevant still and celebrated. That's my news. Ba -dum -ba -dum. Facts. facts. Only facts. And I can talk about Roald Dahl all day, all day, all day. Uh, Wes Anderson has also been a big proponent for not um, changing his work, Roald Dahl's works or, or the works of other artists. I don't know if I sent you that clip, Tom. No. 
but it was at a time where I think we had been talking about George Lucas and why he felt the need to revisit it. And like, I understand that he was like, this is how I saw it when I was making it. But Wes Anderson had a really good point where he said, you know, once it's out in the ether and it's, it's released, we've participated. The audience is now a part of that. We've participated yeah. in it. It's so done. he goes, I understand the need or the want or the drive to change something. But in my eyes, once it's it art is, is out there, that's kind of <laughs> part of what makes it special. Um, oh, man. So I thought that was a cool thing. Both but, You just reminded me of the actual news I think I wanted to talk about. But obviously, you know what? And I'm actually not the... the uh, the leader or the the utmost authority to talk about it. I think Barry's going to be the better one. But oh, what no. you talked about before also, like, they all kind of lead into what I'm going to talk about. So first of all, someone said John Oliver. And then second mm -hmm. of all, someone said John Oliver has been doing stand-up to pay for uh, his cast and crew for yeah, and to, to support the strikes. And the podcast. Which has been really cool because yeah. in light, uh, last week we reported... We reported? The fuck? Uh, we talked about how um, Drew Barrymore is going to continue her show. And a developing story. It has changed. Yeah. Uh, she took to social media to write up an apology, to write up a, hey, I understand. I want to own this moment, this you know video. And I'll tell you right now, depending where you are in the world, right, just depending what circles you're subscribed to, you're connected to, you follow, X, Y, and Z, it can go both ways. The internet is as the internet does, right? Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, that video was later taken down. Um, the apology was later taken down. And the decision to go to air uh, was re reversed. Uh, and so the Drew Barrymore show was not going to happen. Um, and there was other shows that were going to follow in that footsteps, and they also followed in that footsteps of like, cool, we're not going to air as well. Um, and it's one of those things where I always say it this way. Like, I feel like it happened recently where um, a celebrity at large did something, said something. They said, oh, my bad. I didn't know. Um, and then everyone was like, Half of them were like, yes, that's, okay. that's good. You see change, you see reform, you see people trying mm -hmm. to improve and be better themselves. You see a lot of people are like, we'll still condemn them, you know, tie them up to the rafters and make them, you know, for show. You know, that's the taboo, taboo of cancel culture, which I always feel like, you know, it just means you have a momentary suspension. It doesn't mean you're going to be gone forever. Uh, there's still people out there thriving and living and doing great things with their own life, whatever they want to fucking do, uh, that have been quote unquote canceled. Um, and this is one of those moments that I think it's really cool as an observer to see because, you know, on the outside looking in, Drew Barrymore is the face and she had the name and the show with the name on it. And so she ended up becoming the absolute target. There are other people who were doing the same thing, but not such a big target. Uh, mm -hmm. People who don't give a fuck and wouldn't even do any type of an apology. Not as visible. Uh, yeah. Well, some people who wouldn't, who don't give a sh shit, who have a li as maybe as much visibility like Bill Maher, uh, he, I think, also said that he's going to back off. So, like, yeah. there's a really interesting, like, we saw what happened, and yes, that was an example of, but I really hope that, you know, the uh, responsible internet users are seeing, like, hey, it's never too late to make the right decision, and it's never too late to make a good choice. Uh, responsible internet users should also look up the connection between Drew Barrymore and the East India Trading Company. and uh, Like from Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah, you will learn how... Uh, you want to talk about uh you want to talk about privilege oh shit uh, the only reason she is where she's at is because of the british exploitation of southeast asia so um oh shit <laughs> sorry no put that on the discord i want to continue that because that's that's interesting that's super interesting <laughs> yeah that's 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 a thing um and then so that was one part that you guys talked to but then the second part you guys talking about was roll doll works and then revisiting your works and what's in the public zeitgeist barry you might have heard of this uh i believe dave dave willingham what wait which dave oh fables fables or oh. bill willingham right sorry for some reason i thought i thought we were going dave fiolini i was like where are we going no this? bill willingham of fables mm -hmm. announced uh last week that uh fables would be going to public domain um yeah. and a big dispute with dc comics he said Hold up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is, <laughs> is I think that's a yeah. pretty ins like crazy thing, only because, and this this feels bad, because I think general audiences only know Fables from the video game, 
and Wolf sure. Among Us. and Wolf so Almond Gus. so that being said like it already has quote unquote ties licensing deals outside and so for you know quote unquote ip um under the under you know dc which is under warner brothers which is under warner brothers games and then now in public domain like there's going to be some kind of battle but the kind of sweetheart deal from what it sounds like or from what i read sounds like he still was actually able to like somehow do an image comics kind of like deal where he was able to keep it all like under him like he's still the sole owner even though he licensed it to dc and so they're like it's almost reminds me of i remember when we were doing crusaders barry and there was when who was the Spawn character who went to... When, when, when Neil Gaiman took Angela from Spawn over to Marvel. Yeah. Because he because he owned the rights to it. And it was a little bit of a fight with Todd. Yeah. But basically it was like, dude, this was early image. Like, I created this character for you. I wrote this issue. I wrote your character Spawn, but then I created this character Angela. So she's mine. Yeah. And he ended up taking her and they ended up making her related to Thor somehow. And yeah. wild. Re- really impactful yeah. you know lots of angela shirts still being sold yeah. i know a big part of his his argument with dc was that he saw zero dollars from the game licensing right right that was a big, that wasn't... big point yeah so uh, which well, I mean, you he, know he, contracts he, aside he, feels shitty oh yeah he could go the the alan moore route um because i don't think this is necessarily news but i didn't realize this alan moore going forward because i guess for a while because he was so sick of the way dc and warner brothers are handling his stuff he basically said, I don't want any of the money, just like redistribute it amongst the people. Um, now, anything he going forward, he's like, just he's like, any like royalties or anything I should see, he's like, donate it to like Black Lives Matter. Like, he's like, I don't want to, I don't want it. Like, I don't want to even go into like, because he also feels like the people who are creating it are even being disingenuous to what his, what he was originally thinking. Wow. So he's like, nope, skipping over all of you. I don't always all, agree with that man, but sometimes he gets it really right. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really he's, cool. He's definitely, it, it's sometimes definitely I'm like, dude, chill. It's a little, it's a little we, we get it. You're a British anarchist. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay. But then sometimes you're like, yeah, you're cool. Yeah, I fucking cool love this magician. Wizard band. I yeah, love it right. so much. Um, you got right. You can come in. Come on. And then it's like, can we get Dave? Can we get Dave in the room? Dave Gibbons? Can they, can they, can they, can they, we'll talk to you. We don't know. We don't know what to do. He's putting a spell. Um, but no, it's interesting. I have you seen. I don't know what it was. I think it was like a BBC thing, but where he's in the audience and he's talking to himself on stage. Yeah. No, it's so good. It's so good. And it's about pretty much just like what. You know, I think it's like him criticizing his own work, but then also yeah. asking, also telling himself like what he wants. So like the audience members criticizing, like what makes you think you could do da da da, and then him on stage being like, I just want people to think. It's like I don't necessarily think they have to think what I think, but just to think at all and to have their own profound thoughts. And I was like, that's it was really cool. It was one of those like. Yeah. Uh, the artist brain, the artist brain. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so then, yeah. Then he comes back and he's like, yeah, but you missed the point with Rorschach, you nerds. <laughs> you know, it's just it's always uh, something. Did you watch the uh, the the HBO show? Watchmen series? Yeah. Yeah. Did you like it? Uh, I did. I definitely see how Alan Moore would not. Uh, <laughs> like, but, I, yeah, I, but LG, baby. I yeah. would, I would say, less. I would say I liked it as a sequel series more than I liked the Doomsday Clock sequel series. Agreed, 100%. Yeah. 100. The Doom, Doomsday Clock was just like, how can we... We tie into Superman. How can we tie into the Justice League despite the fact that Alan Moore literally talks about how we've infantilized ourselves as adults with these characters from the 50s and 60s? And which, again, I, it was one of those times where I'm like, yeah, that's a very, you know, provocative thought, but also, like, I like my fucking comic books. Alan Moore, leave me alone, you know? Like, oh, yeah. You know, it's, can't always agree with him again. It's... it's funny one of those things so now we'll see that fables this battle with the public domain i don't know if it's actually interesting i don't know if it's actually gonna go through because dc you know warner brothers and Uh, their whole fucking mess over there in their house i don't know except for well facts (laughs) today they released the 4k remaster of um mask the phantasm yeah, and then also during Batman Day, they had the Nolan trilogy in theaters. Yeah. Because in my mind, what it looks like is we need some money from the stuff we've ordered. It, it's, uh, Barry, as Barry said, I think they're wringing water out of stones. I will say this, stone. though. Yeah. with the They released some featurettes with interviews with Kevin Conroy that were previously unreleased during the Mask of Phantasm time. And uh, got me in the feels, man. Oh, yeah. Coming big time in the fields. They, there was one of the clips where they're like, somebody's like, you know, someone asked me if I could play any other superhero, who would I play? 
And he goes, and I sat there for a minute. I just looked at him and he goes, why would I do that? I got the best one. It's like I got on my I, I I got so lucky. I'm so fortunate to be a part of this. And I got Batman mm. on my first one. Like I'm good. And I was like, I just loved how much he loved being Batman. Uh, anyway, define the role for us. Uh, yeah. Moving on to the second part of the show, which is going questions. to be our questions. Everyone, we would love for you guys to be involved in the show. So if you want to send to your send your questions to nerdon.tv slash questions. And if you'd like to be part of the Nerdon community, join the Discord. It's a free community where you can continue the conversations that you love to see here. You know, talk about some of the things, like bring up some more of this stuff. I want to see this Southeast India Trading Company thing thing. And I like to learn. I like to read. I like to get my, my nerd on. I'm, I'm Demir. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to know all the options, all the things, all the perspectives. And then, you know, I can make my own judgments. Um, I dig it. Uh, so join nerdon.tv slash discord. And then you could also put your questions in some of the discord channels, which is for the update show. Talk about your favorite parts, put the clips on there. But if you'd like to support the show, this is, this is my favorite. This is the thing I like the most because it helps us keep the lights on, you know, the hosting of the services, you know, the editing software, the, 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 uh, all the, the Patreon, like, like percentages and stuff like that they all they all get tied up into this bill that we got to take care of at the end of the month just so that we can host all of our episodes for you guys and then make more episodes for you guys um and that's at nerdon.tv slash patreon you join the neuron nation for four quarters just four quarters there's nothing i don't think there's really anything in the world that you can you can buy for four quarters that supports us directly uh, and 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 would help us out as much as so. as joining our Patreon, um, join the Nerd on Nation, and then you get put in like the top of the list to ask us questions, and then you can ask us questions such as Dustin Ninja Kenji asks, "What is your favorite GameCube game?" Mine is a smaller oh. game, Custom Robo. That's a hard one. That's a really hard one because that was when I was like. That was it. You were in there. Cut was, out. What was it? What's our favorite? What game? GameCube game. Oh, there it is. So let me let me tell you a quick story. Gauntlet Dark Legacy. Oh, that's Sorry. a great one. That's no, my that's a, oh god, that's a good one too. Continue. The, the problem. Okay, so so GameCube. Um, the, my my parents like to famously regale people about my antics on Christmas morning. Mm -hmm. um, many Christmas mornings, I was the annoying little brother, like at my the edge of my sister's bed at four a.m., like looking at her, like we have to go downstairs. Very I'm still um, bad. Don't worry about yeah. it. <laughs> but the uh, one time I got up way too early and I went downstairs and I'm like, oh, I won't wake everyone up. I'll just go through all my shit before they get up. And I opened up every GameCube game I'd got and I played each of them for like 15 minutes. And then I put oh. them back in their cases and put them back in the tree. And I tore up at all the magic cards they'd bought me and I had them all uh. in the stack. I, I, I thought I was like, oh, yeah, no, I'm good. And my mom just comes downstairs and she's like, are you fucking kidding me with this? Badass. I miss that feeling of being able to open like three or four games and try them out now because now you're like all right i'll put this one in and i'll let it download for yeah, now I'll, I'll let it run some patches and uh Good see if there's Lord. a bug fix that like, was such the... a such a feeling for a small yeah. amount of time that no longer exists oh, so so from that i mean we had stuff like uh like we had Metroid prime um <sighs> which is just Mwah. but no, we need, like, i will a top say 10 I know that's what I'm saying. I will say what my favorite one. I I, I get them. I can't remember honestly. I'll tell my head which one my favorite. But the the Lord of the Rings, the Two Towers, and Lord of the Rings: The Return of the King. The do ones you, that were on PS2 and GameCube. Do you know how the they the made they made the map out of that game? No. Out of a golf game. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, because they were like, this is where you start, and this is where your objective is. Oh, so it's it's okay. Like to make the yeah. engine the run it was it was, was, a, was a golf engine. engine. And I was like, I love Brilliant. that. I love that. What the fuck? Yeah, no, uh, that game, like the combos and everything in that game were just. The fact it. that you could level up characters, yeah. switch them out. Dude, those games, yeah, it's like Gauntlet and those two are my top three. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. Uh, Look, if someone wants to make a ton of money, just recreate those games and. Mm -hmm. Uh, the game rights. the game my favorite of all time is probably super smash bros melee um sure that is the i mean i spent Solid so answer. much time exactly. because i played with friends you play by yourself you you trained yourself you, you got yourself better at characters and then you went through and then you got to play with it playing sudden death mode with 999 lives is probably the best like 
I don't know. I loved the feeling of training of how to get good at this game because yeah. you have to literally be, you can't like think you just react, you are responsive. And so you're looking at how people move. You're looking at where you're, where you are in the map and it's just badass. And then also you just, you're just nonstop playing it. So it, it was really fun. And we never played with items cause we were just like you, me, mano a mano or like us four brawl it out. You're like, this is, I don't know, it's baller. Uh, and it's your favorite character fucking battling. So, um, yeah, dude, I was so, so bad at that game. Oh, I love that game. <laughs> um, and, but, like, the thing is, so you guys did some tops. So I'll do some top couple of games. Second, probably spent the most time on. It's really bad. It's really sad that this is it, but it's, it's everyone knows it should not have been this good, especially for, like, one of those trademark games or whatever, or movie made to games, Spider-Man 2. Oh. No. Okay. Well, yeah, the Spider-Man yeah. 2 movie game. It was so I mean the pizza Pitching missions. Like you were going to say something like, you know, the 7-Eleven run man game. <laughs> the Burger King came. game. <laughs> yeah, no. You you're right on that one. That's okay. Uh the 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 seven up spot which did that's have a game. That's the one I was trying to remember. On I was like, to say wow. so. <laughs> uh, and then third, I mean, I spent a shitload of time playing Kirby's Air Ride. Uh, yeah. I mm -hmm. there's a there's a mode called City Escape where you and three other people like get on your swerve stars and then you could go find better vehicles and you could increase and make them better and it, and all you're doing this in like 15 or 10 minutes you have to get all, like more flight heavier better turning better more attack all for you to like at the end of it all and you could attack each other and destroy each other's shit and be evil to each other, or you just make your thing as good as you possibly can, so you could play a mini game afterwards. And whoever has the best yeah. bike wins, or best car nice. wins. And it, that was insane. So, uh, all right, moving. That was a that's a great question. I love that question. Great question, Dustin Jukenji. Thank you. Uh, this is tricky three. Next question. Full, full caliber too. Um, <laughs> in the same. Oh, so, oh sorry. Uh, in the same uh, vein. Turn the link for a second. I know. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Spencer thirteen eight shout out asks, what video game made every other video game worse after you played it? Mine is Red Dead Redemption two. I just don't know what to do anymore. Corey, Knights of the Old Republic. <laughs> Here we go. That's the that's the litmus test for all <laughs> other games. Knights of the Republic, Knights of the Old Republic two. Those games destroyed me as a player, as as a player of any RPGs uh if, it, if it's light on one thing i'm like i'm out i'm back to just i'm gonna go back and get my heart broken again that this remake got canceled uh so nice the old republic shout out to obsidian sure. ruined it. Ruined <laughs> it. yeah ruined it for me i would say for for me um it i have never spent as much time as i did playing uh diablo 2 Mm. like i like at, at, up until then like i you know i i never like when i think about stuff i do land parties on and stuff that i play online like nothing ever even to this day like i'll do i, I there's there are great rp rpgs there are great roguelike games like there are so many good things out there i mean i know like Baldur's gate is you know the possibly the greatest game i've ever played in my life but nothing nothing hit what the the feeling with diablo 2 like I will never get that feeling again of when I played Diablo 2. Yeah. Uh even, yeah, the remake didn't even No. Nah, no, nah, even yeah, remake Diablo 3, Diablo 4, none of them came close. No. Like wow. when you say bail ru bail runs for Trang, like I get goosebumps. So you know so saying? so <laughs> why why the second one not the remake for the second one? What's the difference? I mean, it how looks the good. internet works. Yeah. Yeah, that's honestly it, it, it's like the the you can't you can't you know you can't catch that in a bottle that magic in a bottle you can't like, catch it are. again mm -hmm. yeah like, like there, there's too many other factors you know like yeah the time i can commit to it like my feelings about blizzard as an organization yeah you know like my feelings about a lot of different things like i just when i think about diablo 2 it wasn't just i mean the game was 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 near perfect like i loved that game but then i just think about all the things i was doing then you know like i was you know, when my dad and I built a computer and then we built a second computer, my friends were able to come over and we would literally play Diablo 2 for like 14 hours straight and just level up as much as we could. Like so I would go, I had played the game 
so much into the ground. I had all the best gear, and I would still go play the demo at Comp USA, which ended <laughs> after you beat the Den of Evil, and it would restart. I would always go in there. I'd be looking at shit, and I'm like, okay, cool. I'm gonna play a Necromancer real fast. I'm gonna do all the way up to the Den of Evil. I have the game at home. I have the best gear in the game, and I'm still doing that. Like nothing. Because it was compared. it was fun. It was just feeling. a fun. There had nothing, you know, and we had also never seen anything like it before at that time, too. And we've seen yeah. copies, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste for years now. So when it came to the remake, it was just like, yeah, but it's yeah. just something about. Because if I never played it, should I do the remake? Too, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, yes, definitely. Yeah. It, it's it's the same. I mean, it's the same game. Like, the, you know, it, it, it looks better, obviously, you know, the on, on the upgrade. It's way better graphic. than four. Because yeah. I'll say right now, uh, uh, Brilliant, Diamond, and Shining Pearl are not the same games as Diamond and Pearl in Pokemon. And that shit sucked because of that yeah. fact. And I was like, no, ah, that's same, rough. It's the same It's game. It's just a reskinning of the game. Okay. Um, they added it, a it, few which, end game amulets and stuff, but... Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But like structurally, it's pretty much... They, they didn't like try to like, okay, cool, we're, we're going to retell the story, but then it's going to be in like the Diablo 3 mechanics, no. the Diablo 4, and now it was... And and I will say the Diablo Four story, like I really did enjoy the story, story. and I'm definitely excited for the expansion. Um, the way they're talking about the paywall system, I'm not exactly looking forward to. But I'm like, dude, if you wanna if you wanna charge me thirty bucks to tell me what happens next, I'm in. They also gotta just fix the season. The next yeah. season has to be not high risk, low reward anymore. Yeah, and and <laughs> and can't be and can't be coming out at the same time as Path of Exile Two is like, hey, here's all the worst things about Diablo that we fixed. Yeah. and hope you're ready yeah. for that like oh thanks guys and Baldur's Gate came out <laughs> yeah the same can't time even, that the... that's not even like can't even anyway. sneeze at it um for me <laughs> it's probably Bloodborne um oh ooh. recent one play yeah, yeah I, I think you know like obviously like, there's the, there was the Pokemon era for me and then there's a the Smash Bros era and then for a while it was the Mega Man Battle Network era but like in terms of like my bar none of just being like if I'm gonna get a triple A game and this is what made me so like critical of games i was like i'm paying 60 70 sometimes 80 dollars for a game like how are you going to tell me that it needs to have a fix on day one like sure you, you there's no way like because of that game when i got it i was just like oh this is a complete game i i've spent 30 40 hours on it and i got a complete game experience i got to ex like you know configure my person and I got to interact with the story as much as I wanted to, right? Like I'm very particular and Corey knows that I mashed through story. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Let me play the game. Like I didn't come here for, to re listen to an audiobook and watch a movie. I, I paid $60 to play. I could pay $15 to go watch a two hour movie. That's I want to Tom play couldn't game. Get Night's Deal Republic. Yeah. Uh, oh, Cause he would skip dude. all the dialogue. And he was like, what am I doing? It's like, they, just told you what you're doing and so you're, you're you're experiencing star wars through the greatest lens ever that's what you're doing and so yeah, right yeah with, thank you with bloodborne what happens like the 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 blood has poisoned the blood and then i'm like I, okay let's go and then like it would say on the bottom it's like find the gate to old yard i'm like all right i'm going and then it's yeah. like there's the there's old bilbo bastard and it's like all right let's fight this motherfucker and then it's like oh the the old ancient evil it's like all right i don't give a fuck and then it's like the rising moon get to the i'm like all right I'm go let's go let's go and like it just goes it like you can you can blast through it if you want to or you can like let me get the ambiance say oh let me go fight this secret boss i'm not supposed to fight it's like i don't give a fuck let's like the first thing you do you can beat this thing or you can die and play it like normal or you can challenge yourself and you're like oh fuck you yeah. but also the tone and the music and then the the character design like all of it right like it all is very in its own pocket, right? It's like, that's not meant for everyone, right? If you wanna play Fortnite, sure. you're not gonna to wanna to look at the like monsters of Bloodborne. But I think in terms of quality, input, gameplay, and as well as when you find out that there's multiple endings and like it warrants you to want to play it again so you can actually interact with the story, you're like, oh, that's really cool. Because if you didn't like respect the story, you wouldn't understand it. And so like it, it, it kind Good of concept, Tom. It requests it requests like could you, if you want, you can play. It's like, okay, fine, fine, I'll do that. Or you could just blast through it like an asshole like I do. So like I <laughs> I I you know what I'm saying, like Bloodborne out there. This is before I even realized like from software was a thing. So I was like, okay, mm -hmm. sure. Okay, for sure, for sure. Uh, good question. Good question. Shout out Spencer. Um, next, uh, Ethan, who? 
Now, I know Corey, this, I picked this one because I thought it was only going to be me and Corey tonight, but I want to hear Barry's answer. Because I know Corey loves mechs. He loves Gundams. He loves robots. Uh, I, Ethan, I who don't. asks, he doesn't, he hates them. Um, I don't. If you can <laughs> have a custom mech. I know, I'm the odd man out here. It's fine. <laughs> what weapons would you equip? Uh, eject. <laughs> <laughs> eject, but. Uh, okay. No, I would. Every time I think, you know, the only mech I've enjoyed is what, Tom? Um, uh, Big, uh, no, it's uh, Gurren Lagan. No. It's, no, no, no. it's, it's, Escaflone. it's childhood. It's uh, Metabots. Oh, the Dragonzord. Not even Dragonzord. Fucking Megazord, bro. Oh, Megazord. OG Megazord. Whatever sword he had, that's what I'd equip my shit with. Okay, there you go. Okay. Sick. And and so animals and, and an elephant animals. face shield. Or yeah, an elephant face, face shield and a yeah and a, and a sword. Nice. Please, and I thank like you. It. And fists that turn into <laughs> guns. <laughs> the way they rotate in. Yeah, the way they rotate in to attach to the arms I of like the mammoth. I'm down uh, with that. So cool, dude. Why don't you like big robots? I. So I've watched a lot. I've watched Gurren Lagann. I've watched. Uh, we did um, uh, Neon Genesis as well. Okay. I think the um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the lack of it's not not lack of connection, but like the in-person. What's the word I'm looking for though? The lack of humanness to them. I just phew, shut down. Okay. Like during those big mech fights aren't interesting to me. I tried. I liked Voltron a lot. That was the closest I got to. But anytime it would, they were like in the Voltron. I was like, can we just get back to them being people and talking? And but what if like if they felt the, the fighting, like they felt the impact? Would that do anything for you? Or if like the robots no. had personalities? No, like for me, like the scenes where they're like talking to each other and just like floating in space and they're like saying badass shit to each other, but they're just floating machines that the machines are not because interesting to me i guess because it's the, the same reason i don't like cars like i just don't like i don't find them interesting because the, the like, two cars cars is in the vehicles or cars is in the owen wilson film both because okay. <laughs> like the two thing i think about is Good is zoids Good right channel. i do like cars though the movie because Zo because the two things i think about zoids because they're all animalistic they're all dinosaurs and then some of them have personalities the second one i think about is g gundam where like they move the robot moves like they're it's it's like it's not sure, like, they're like in a pacific cockpit. rim type shit no better way better I, okay but like yeah yeah wait wait can i can i make one suggestion yeah can I absolutely make one I'm suggestion open. um have you watched a lot of gundam i've watched some not a lot okay have you watched the eighth ms team no no don't look at me like that tom what was that face i don't part? know what that is, is. the eighth ms team yeah yeah so the eighth MS, I believe, I'm trying to remember how long it is. Um, yeah, I don't know this one. It's not, it's not a super long one. Hang on, hang on, eighth MS. Uh, um, I believe it, it, yeah, it's only one season. Um, mm -hmm. Twenty five so, episodes. Yeah, so it is specifically like it's much more, episodes. it's much yeah. more grounded. Like it's not mm -hmm. space battles. Like they're not floating around each other in space. Um, it's a little bit more like. A little bit more guerrilla warfare kind of gritty uh down to earth sure gundams um they're also not space gods where they're just like cool i can just rip through everything like they take damage they have to protect themselves because you know they can lose these things like just like the regular vehicles yeah and there's more i feel like there's a lot more emotion to it given the circumstance i'm gonna give this a try but yeah my 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 main thing is once they're in the suits i just like gloss over sure that, like, and I, I will say me. there there's a there is a lot of like there's a lot of out out of the suit stuff i think i, know, I think eighth ms team is good how about yeah. you hold off on that hold off on that we could watch oh. that together Corey, because i think okay. we'll, we'll get through we'll, we'll get through fast you and furious seen, first haven't i haven't seen it okay oh. i think Corey and eighth i need MS? to get through fast and furious first <clears throat> okay. and then you'll care about stupid car shit and then you'll care about everything <laughs> that'll be the yeah, logical leap that's yeah that's a little different that's a little that's a little different um but yeah it's just never i don't know i don't know what it is never been my never been my jam i, I love blood iron orphans just because it's like kids 
who are doing it and yeah. then like they're literally like pawns of war from adults and it's it, it's really just well, driving in the theme of like war yeah. is paid by well that's how, that's how gundam wing which was is like you know what... like neon genesis was too like it, that's what a lot of them are a lot yeah. of them are you know them being forced to do these things you know acting as puppets and and what and you know revolting against their masters kind of a thing like it's a common theme it's good shit yeah. um so okay so mechs Mech. custom yeah. mechs what would you here's, what would you put so first off i would have large very large shoulder pads like ridiculous like bulbous shoulder pads that would have the the shields where where like the little little like pads like pop off and they would form like a shield around my my mech but i would also then in turn want them those pads themselves to be lasers so that i could target lasers at stuff while i'm flying around with a shield around me you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying mm -hmm. um double beam sabers in the in the the forearms of my mech so i could you know pull it out and double beam sabers um I may or may not want the flaming hand thing. I'm not 100 percent Burning sure. fingy. Kind of also, yeah, kind of also want the the the, dra the dragon tail. Ooh. But what I will say, what I will say is, as far as aesthetics go, in Gundam Wing, when all the Gundams get destroyed and then rebuilt, um, the reimagining of heavy arms is one of my favorite designs ever. With the the quadruple Gatling guns and all the missiles that all shoot out of his pouches, it's very like '90s Image Comics ridiculousness with all like the missiles and stuff. So all these little little like panels that pop open and just fire random missiles and shit, just like ridiculous, like it just AOE destruction. You know what I'm saying? I didn't realize the Burning Finger is a Spocker. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. No finesse, no finesse in mind. Just, just, just obliterating everything. Thick boy. Um, Thick boy. Mine. I mean, oh, man, I just made my armored core on in the Ooh, in the new from go. software game look like Omnimon from Digimon. Uh, <laughs> so it's I got it's got a blue wolf gun looking thing, and it's got an orange gun thing. So it's like War Greymon. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I would if if I could if I could have my own custom mech, honestly. It's, big ass cannons i'm blastoise baby <laughs> just just you know and so my build in my armor core is called the shot collar build so it pretty much has two stun cannon needles and then two shotguns and so pretty much like if i if i hit you you can't you you either die that first encounter or you die the second time so it's it's sure. it's it's pretty i'm looking up, i'm looking at my gundams right now because i have one oh. right now that has like the, the backpack with the two like, oh hell yeah two cannons you you, the you, you build gunpla Oh hell yeah, dude! The fuck! I, I I started doing that shit when I started going to therapy. Oh no, I've been so I I would I've been doing it since I since I gave up on painting Warhammer when mm. I was fourteen because I could not paint Warhammer, but I could do the stickers. Mm. On the gun, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you mean. So yeah, and it's it's also uh, I have I have a lot at my my desk at work has a lot of them because I'll buy them and build them when I'm in between calls. Okay, all right. Yeah. Thank you, Ethan Who, for the question. Uh, also, uh, Barry, you made Ethan Who's day by mentioning uh, Eighth MS team. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask a question from the chat. This one's actually directed to Corey really early in. Yo, Corey, feeling like a pump king this season? I'm grabbing the Trader Joe's bagels tomorrow. 100%. My wife and I have had pumpkin spice coffee creamer for about a month now. Sometimes you just have rough weeks and you go, you know what? Let's just commit. Let's commit to the things that make us happy uh 100 percent. yeah I, I'm, I'm a pumpkin all day uh every day i also got uh pumpkin spice oreos oh yeah dude and those were delightful Ooh. those were you know the nice thing about those is they're really rich so you only have like two and yeah. you're good which is the serving you, size on which oreos. you actually yeah you actually <laughs> the serving size for the first yeah. time in your life so, yeah. so like i felt really good about myself there too i was like thank you pumpkin spice you've saved yeah. another life today um so yeah feeling it uh, I will say there is a new drink at, at Starbucks. I'm not a Starbucks guy, but they got me with this one. It's like um, it's a big thing in the fall, especially in in uh, on the West Coast and, and and farther East Coast, is to go to like apple orchards and get mm -hmm. these apple cinnamon donuts. Mm -hmm. And they have a uh, I'm a big fan of the uh, cold brew with the foam on top, and they have an apple mm -hmm. cinnamon donut cold brew with the foam. I'm in. I'm 100% getting that hair. shit. Like you, tomorrow, so I'm going. I I wish I wish because did I ever tell you about when when I helped open a comic and coffee shop here in in, in Sac called Oblivion nope. Comics and Coffee? It was it, it was sad that they went under, but they had a coffee shop up front and a comic book store in the back. I ran the comic book store along with Amy, my fellow. Crusader. Oh, dope! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And during the fall, they had something called the Pumpkin King. And what it was is it was not pumpkin spice. It was specifically pumpkin pie filling oh, flavoring. Yo. And it was something about it. Just like it was because it wasn't just the spice. It was everything else in there. But to and be they a would Steve's do that. Looked at the rock again. Like, oh. yeah, exactly. And then oh. what they do it. And then they would do the they would do like the foam art with a little bit of the a little bit of cinnamon on top. And they would do Jack Skellington on oh. top. It was great. Chef's was, kiss. Yes, yeah, please. I, and I, I want to track down that that flavoring because I, I I think it, I can't remember if it was Ghirardelli because they use a lot of Ghirardelli product. Okay. But um, yeah, it was. I'm gonna try. Uh, I'm gonna, I've been gonna try some stuff. I've seen some uh, shout out to TikTok. I've seen some stuff about how to make some at home uh, pumpkin coffees using actual pumpkin puree. You know, to save yeah. your health. Uh, and uh, everyone is like, this is actually better than yeah. the fake shit. So I'm like, I, I have so I have much some pumpkin puree in my kitchen right now. I'm about I have to try so some shit much tomorrow. pumpkin puree in oh. my house because every, every time a dog throws up, I'm like, here, just take a fucking the throw that. We have all the yeah. cats. I'm like, Always. pumpkin puree, just rice, and chicken. Down. Go, yep, go ahead. Yep. Boil, go boiled nuts. white chicken, white, a little bit of cottage cheese, and they're like, "We're eating like kings," and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah it's fine." Sure Don't you are. Throw up on my carpet, please. <laughs> sure you are. Um, shout out to Year Rounds for the follow. Also, I forgot to shout out uh, Battery Print for the new sub for 45 months. Uh, wow. We got time for two questions. Two more questions, we yeah, think. I mean, okay. Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'm I'll, good. Dude, I mean, we can keep this going, homie. All right, let's do. Let's do a quick one. T Dog 8282 ass. Question, choose one. The rest must go. Pokemon, One Piece, Yu-Gi-Oh, Avatar The Last Airbender. I think I know the answers for everyone. All right, go ahead do then, you? Tom. Do Corey, you answer for us, Corey's going to do Pokemon, and Barry's going to do Avatar. It's a pick one. Yeah, and the rest will go away. I might do Avatar. Oh, shit. I might do Pokemon. Oh, shit, that's what's up. <laughs> I've been on a real uh, Korra kick this last week, just as a comfort I mean, show. I, I definitely love Avatar, but I mean, po Pokemon. Just, I mean, you know, I'm like, I was a kid in the '90s, dude. Yeah. Like Pokemon. I know. I know. I, I think was... it's because I didn't buy the last game that I'm feeling. I've, I haven't played a game. I haven't played an actual Pokemon game in a while. But like, uh, I randomly go through. Arceus. I randomly go through my my Pokemon cards, and I'm sure. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, time, po without Pokemon, none of these would really be around. You none know? of them. None of them. It set the palette for the Western That's audience true. to be wanting these kind of things. That's uh, true. But also, my man, my Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, I gotta, I mean, I mean, I mean. I downloaded. <laughs> had me uh, I downloaded Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Master Duel? The, the I think that's the one I got. They have, they have like two apps that are apparently like. Don't use dual links. <laughs> okay. Okay. And because I'd never actually. So funny enough, I collected Pokemon cards. I never actually played the Pokemon trading card game. I only played Magic. I played the Warcraft trading card game and then Hearthstone. But I never actually played the Pokemon card game. And I never actually played Yu-Gi-Oh! And I recently watched a Tolarian Community College where he did a he had a couple yeah, guys play Yu-Gi-Oh! And that. I was like, you know what? Like, I might actually, I don't want to buy cards just because that's another thing. But if I could play an app and learn the basis of the game. Bro. You know, like. Bro. I've been, I bro. made Corey a deck. I got these structure decks right here, baby. We okay. can fucking okay. play. There, there's, so, I mean, the thing is like this. I, I when I went to an LGS and they said like, oh, magic players, da da da, and then I'm like, oh, I, I'm, I'm learning magic, and they're like, oh, what did you play before? I was like, Yu Gi Oh. I was like, oh, you're gonna play fast. Then I was like, what does that mean? He's like, all Yu Gi Oh players want to play fast, and I'm sure. like, that's my shit. Three good games is better than one sloggy game. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna okay. let's go, baby. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, next question. Uh, battery print. This will be the last question of the night. Um, Battery Print asks, there are a lot of simulator games for more mundane tasks now. With everything from Power Wash Simulator to PC Building Simulator, what's a simulator game that you'd like to create, and what game, what would the game entail? Simulator, simulator. How the fuck do you real, simulate real a simulator? fucking meta. You, the game is you playing as a guy playing a simulator game. On his computer. You mean Sims? Computer, <laughs> or computer. You mean that, Sims? That's the, that's the episode of The Office where where Dwight is so into the Second Life game that he creates a Second Life yeah. within Second Life and starts charging people to play. Yep. That's right. That's right. Um, that's a great. That's a great question because I'm trying to think. Like I'm trying to think of like mundane tasks that I really I really enjoy, um, and one that I might want to to simulate. 
Yeah, I mean, my ultimate simulator is ancient ruler, aka civilization, <laughs> but um, more for mundane. Does Tom think about the Roman Empire? Yeah, I... <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm on that side of TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, oh, man, I, I, I mean, I like that shit. Where like, I like, okay, if I battle these people and I make trades with these city states, then they're gonna have allegiance with me, and then they'll fight me when I betray this guy. Um, but uh, if I can actually do simulator, man, I mean, I guess, I mean, I, you know, what I would do fucking tech support, IT uh, simulator. I was actually thinking customer service simulator. <laughs> and fucking tickets come in and they don't stop in. And then you get a phone call and you have to be like, select the answer. It's like, I understand. Yes, you're right. And it's just like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, dude, that, with that Apple training, it's just, you, it's, you, you need, you need no other customer service training. Bro. Like I legitimately, it's like, I decimate. I decimate my coworkers. I say something like, "Oh wow, that's so that's so thoughtful." And I'm like, "That was week one, Apple baby. Like, <laughs> come on, it's easy shit. Acknowledge a line yep. of sure is easy." Yo, one time I said like, "They're like, oh yeah, there's a meeting, and then they don't really say the right thing. Like, they mean the right thing, but then they make it feel bad when they say like, unfortunately, it is where it is." And then I'm like, "You gotta say, as it turns out, this is what we could yep. do, baby." And then it's like, "Oh, it is a positive. <laughs> Everything's gotta be a positive." Do you know how often I tell my hurt. coworkers we got to assume positive intent? Like, hmm. come on, assume positive intent. Like, it works. Like, it works. No oh, bro. I Simulator like I like Mamba's that answer. That shit works. Mamba said they're they're simulating as Tom, which I don't know what that entails. I don't know bro, what that means. You talk about the simulator simulator. I'm playing as Tom. That's my simulator. That's what he said. I'd be down with that. I don't know what that I, means. Oh yeah, I want the I want the Sims, but it's just the Tom edition. What it's happens? Tom. Oops, all Toms. Is it like no. Tom gets really good at one thing, all of a sudden gets distracted by a beautiful babe? gets depressed and then gets good at something else <laughs> yeah man that sounds like I'll, I'll buy that on steam tomorrow let's make yeah, it happen yeah early access that shit it's like how how, <laughs> how many heartbreaks does it take to be good at everything find out today on this game <laughs> uh, next week on dragon ball z um actually i think you know what would be cool now that we mentioned that the the gun plot that'd be cool to have like a simulator where you're just like building models because i think about like how much they cost and the space and everything like it could be cool to you know get you know, cl clip them all together and then be able to just have like a giant room of them in a simulator fashion like that, you know, and you could have different model collections if you wanted, if you want to do like model trains and stuff like I got those, you know, or uh, if you can paint Warhammer and it does it perfectly for you. Oh, dude, like, like <laughs> almost like uh, like a uh, hero, like color, like color, color by numbers yeah. for, for Warhammer. <laughs> and there's I, I, I no matter how hard I try, I can't screw up the eye because it's digital. I would I would love that. All right. I would love that. I really want to play Warhammer. Yeah. Dude. I've I've looked into I because I've I don't thought about have like, three grand though. No, I don't have three grand. <laughs> I what really comes down to it is I don't have six grand to pay someone else to paint the army for me <sighs> sure. and then get the army. Because yeah. I I couldn't like I when I first got it, my couldn't uncle do all Nike. My my uncle did um like like the little like lead soldiers like, yeah. from, like back in the day. And he's like, oh yeah, you just dip them in red and you dip the other army in blue. And those are your two armies. I was like, no, no, my space Marines must have details. Like my orcs <laughs> must have bangs. details. Gold my trim. Orc boys. Yeah, they won't just, I mean, if they're all red, they'd Tom go really fast. Play Necrons. So, you know, or, or uh, what's that? Chaos breakers or war breakers? World breakers. Yeah, world leaders. <sighs> world leaders. Oh, they look so fucking bad. Anyways. I want to do chaos with sound machines. Uh, sound, mar sound Marines though. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Uh, that was good. Y'all got kids. I got. I gotta rest up. I gotta take my night quills, baby. Thank you, everyone, for swinging by. Uh, Mamba, battery print for the raid. Year rounds for the follow. But you want Jonathan, Ethan, who for the questions? Love all of y'all. All, all y'all lurkers out there who haven't chimed in. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you want to continue the conversation again, join our Discord, nerdon.tv slash Discord. Uh, check out our podcast uh, feed as well as our YouTube channel because we got some stuff coming up soon. We're recording stuff. We're editing it, and it's coming out. Um, take care of yourselves. It's kind of crazy holiday season coming up. Uh, keep a uh, 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 an eye on the Discord because we're gonna be posting some new stuff that we follow from here. Talk about Drew Barrymore. We'll talk about Drew yeah. Barrymore. I want to. I want to learn. Learn, learn. I'm here. Less. I'm here about it. Also, you're gonna have to pit up with my incessant. <laughs> Uh, learning about uh, 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 Hajime no Ippo. Uh, my short film is in post production. We're looking forward to finishing it soon. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and raid somebody. Uh, 
who we got to suggest? Feel like I could raid somebody. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, Damp to hell. They're playing Starfield. Corey played that uh, or, oh, or, or, or worked on that. So that's cool. I did. Um, raid you. Oh, no. We're raiding Brad. Sorry. Brad oh, plays yeah. Starfield. Uh, bad reprint. Um, <laughs> bad reprint. Let me know when you're ready. Never mind. Bad reprint. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, is for Brad? <laughs> for Brad. <laughs> Brad. Are you on? Are you on? Are you on? We won't end until you're on. We have to end, though. Oh, now we got another question. Here we go. <laughs> We're vamping. We're vamping. Are you actually are you actually gonna go live though, Brad? If you're not if you're not, then I will. Yeah, Brad just went live. The Boom. system is down. The system is down. Down down. Okay, hold on. He's live. He's, he's live. live. He's live. He's live. He's live. <clears throat> Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Everyone. Uh wish Brad a good stream. I can't why can't I see him? Good stream. Why can't I? No? I guess. Raid? How the fuck? Who uh, knows, man? Um, raid? Um, um, raid channel. A bad reprint. Ah! ah. Do the ah. chat! Ah. Alright, everyone, take care of yourselves. You all know the drill, as always. Nerd, Nerd on. on. Nerd on.